Well, the House is ready to roll out its budget, but so far for the third straight year, nothing from the Senate. The Senate's April 1st deadline is fast approaching, and the ranking member on the Senate Budget Committee says Democrats are drumming up phantom controversies to deflect attention from the lack of a budget. And also this week, some alarming discoveries about the millions of Americans that could lose their coverage under President Obama's health care law. Senator Jeff Sessions joins us now to talk about both of those. Senator, thank you for coming in today. Senator, good to be with you. All right, uh, you're a member of the Senate Budget Committee, so let's start there. Um, how many days has it been, and why isn't there a budget? Well, it's well over a thousand days since the Senate has passed a budget or brought one to the floor, and Senator Reid has said it'd be foolish to bring up a budget. He has no intention of bringing one up at a time when our nation has never faced a more systemic debt threat. Look, our deficit per capita is $44,000 per person. That's greater than Greece. It's greater than any other country in Europe. It's unsustainable, and under the president's budget that he just submitted a few uh, weeks ago, uh, it will go to $75,000 per person over 10 years. So this is unsustainable, as every expert has told us. You would think that a party that wants to lead the Senate would produce a budget. You are correct that uh, Paul Ryan and his House team, I'm so proud of them, they're going to produce a budget next week. It will be a historic budget. It will alter the debt course of America. It will take us from unsustainability to sustainability. I'd like to see them go really far with that budget, but whatever they come up with, I'm confident it will put us on a sustainable path, and that's what we need. All right, politics aside and parties aside, doesn't the Senate have some type of legal obligation or legislative obligation to produce a budget each year? Yes. Uh, the, in statutory law, there's a requirement that by April 1st, the Senate committee um, bring, passes out a budget, we pass a budget, and by April 15th, an entire budget be passed. Uh, that has not been done uh, in, uh, for years now, and it's just unacceptable because Really, when Senator Reid said it's foolish to bring up a budget, what he really is doing is avoiding having his members have to confront in, the, before, in public, not in secret meetings, but in public, with votes, the real issues that threaten America. It's tough. I got to tell you, it's not going to be easy, but we are absolutely able to change the debt course and get on a sound path if we make up our mind to it. All right, I want to give uh, you a chance to respond to some comments from Senator Kent Conrad, who is the chair of the Senate Budget Committee. He says that Republicans have convenient amnesia and just talking points because there is a budget in place for this year and next. He talks about the 10-year spending caps, of course. He's referencing the Budget Control Act that was right. passed uh, last fall. Uh, it, it's not the same as a budget, but he says there is framework in place and that Republicans aren't being honest about that. Well, Senator Conrad would like to bring up a budget, but he's basically overruled by the majority leader, Senator Reid. But, yes, the, um, the budget numbers are there, but they are still numbers such that it's unsustainable and that we passed last August. But amazingly, the Budget Control Act that passed last August had put 10-year spending limits in place, not nearly enough, but a little improvement. President Obama's budget he submitted five months later wipes out those cuts. The $1.1 trillion in cuts through the sequester, he would totally eliminate those cuts. The bill that he signed that I put us slightly improved, uh, but not enough, uh, he now wants to undermine that. And so this is why American people are losing confidence in us. We talked one time about cutting spending and being more frugal and tightening our belt. And as soon as the um, situation gets tough, we walk away from it. I want to make sure I get a question into you, too, about the president's health care law, which, of course, will be challenged at the Supreme Court starting a week from Monday. Uh, there are new C CBO projections that came out this week, not only about the cost of the, of the law, but also uh, by CBO projections, which is a nonpartisan group, of course, um, that up to 20 million Americans could be forced off of their current employer-provided coverage. Um, there's pushback from the White House and other groups that say, you know, these aren't the full picture. These projections and numbers aren't completely accurate because of the way CBO uh, calculates. Um, but to most people, they were some startling numbers. They were startling numbers. And what we know is the president promised that in 10 years, the, the health care bill would cost $900 billion. What we've learned from this budget is that in the uh, 10 years that it takes effect, the first 10 years, it will cost three times that much. $2.6 trillion. And we do think, and many experts uh, and have analyzed it, they think far more people will leave uh, the private 
coverage, that businesses will drop their coverage, and they will then go into this uh, group, this pool, and it costs as much as $10,000 from the taxpayer's subsidy uh, when people go into that pool. And if, if many times the number go into it, as, as have been originally uh, suggested, then deficits in the health care bill will be even larger than expected. So we really do need to look at that closely. And the danger is nobody knows. I mean, literally, multiple times as many people could lose health care coverage in, from their business, go into these pools, and hammer the Treasury of the United States with huge unexpected costs. That is a very real possibility. In fact, I think there will be quite a few more people going into it than have been originally projected. Well, we'll be watching, as I know you will, about a week from now when the Supreme Court takes up these arguments. We'll see what the nine or at least five of the justices decide on that. Senator Sessions, thank you for visiting with us. We appreciate thank your time. Thank you.